Hi, we're out on our range today, and we have several Heritage Rough Rider revolvers, all in caliber 22 long rifle. Everything we shoot today will be caliber 22 long rifle. Now, one of them we have has a, according to my ruler, a 4 and 7 eighths inch barrel. We also have one with a six and a half inch barrel. And of course, we have this carbine that has a 16 inch barrel. And to go along with this carbine, we have the handgun with a 16 inch barrel. Now these two firearms are identical except for one having a shoulder stock. So this will give us a really good fair comparison between the accuracy I can achieve with a rifle versus the accuracy I can achieve with a handgun. We can also compare this for accuracy to the other handguns and compare this long barrel for power with the shorter barreled handguns. Now let's start with going to the chronograph. Before we go to the chronograph, let me take a moment to show you a close-up of how this revolver works. First, it's single action. You can't just pull the trigger. You have to cock the hammer for each shot. Now, the way you load this revolver is you pull the hammer back two clicks to half cock. That free wheels the cylinder. Then you open the loading gate and you'll load in one round at a time. The manufacturer recommends that you load this six shot revolver with only five rounds and then lower the hammer all the way onto an empty chamber. You can load with six and then put it on this half cock position. You can also carry this on safety. Here the safety is in fire position. If I put it up, all that does is block the hammer from hitting the firing pin. You can still cycle the action. But again, the manufacturer recommends carrying the hammer completely forward on an empty chamber. Now, after you've fired your rounds, you go back to the half cock position to freewheel the cylinder, open the loading gate, and then using this ejector rod, push out your empty casings one at a time until they're all out, and then start the loading process over again, rotating each time. Now, let's go to the chronograph. I have the chronograph set up at seven yards and I have the four and seven eighths inch barrel revolver loaded with our federal 525 grain value pack, 36 grain hollow point. A thousand eighty nine. A thousand eighty four. thousand seventy five a thousand twenty eight and a thousand seventy nine now let's see if our longer barreled revolver will add to our velocity and now our six and a half inch barrel A thousand thirty one. A thousand forty six. A thousand twenty one. A thousand eleven. A thousand forty eight. And 984. Let's try another gun. Now let's try our revolver with a 16 inch barrel. Remember, the longer your barrel, the more velocity you'll get up to a point, and there are some exceptions. If I were to use a conventional 16 inch barrel rifle, we would expect significantly greater velocity. However, this being a revolver, there's pressure lost between the cylinder and the forcing cone. So, will this long barrel help us or hinder us? Let's find out. Nine oh nine. A thousand eleven. Nine ninety six. Nine oh one. And nine hundred. Let's shoot a couple more shots. Seven 
sometimes when the readings are that inconsistent, I'll fire a few extra shots to titrate out those inconsistent readings. thousand forty five that might have been the cartridge that sounded a lot hotter nine ninety four duplicate nine ninety four nine fifty five we'll shoot one more. 990. Now let's try our carbine and see if the same barrel length on that will give us similar readings. And now we'll try our 16 inch barreled carbine. A thousand fifteen. A thousand nine. Nine eighty five, nine seventy two, a thousand eighteen, and a thousand twelve. Let's try one more firearm. This is a Ruger 1022. There are many like it, but this one is not mine. However, this one has a 16 and a half inch barrel. Let's see how it compares to our Rough Riders with their 16 inch barrels. Twelve forty nine. Twelve forty. 1278 1282 1253 1273 and 1264 now let's go crunch those numbers well, I crunched the numbers and here they are. And of course it comes with the normal caveats that chronographs don't always agree with each other and certain environmental factors like elevation and ambient temperature can affect chronograph results. And the results I got were, with our four and seven eighths inch barrel revolver, we've got a mean velocity of 1,071. Now, when we go to our six and a half inch barrel revolver, we'd expect to get a little more velocity, but we don't, we got 1,023. That's a loss of 48 feet per second. That was actually surprising. But when we go to our 16 inch barrel revolver, the handgun, we would expect to get a little more velocity, but we don't. We get a mean velocity of 968. That's a loss of another 55 feet per second. Now, when we go to our Heritage carbine, that's the same 16 inch barrel revolver, just with a shoulder stock, we get a velocity of 1001. That's a gain of 33 feet per second over the handgun. That's within the variation of one round to the next, not enough difference to make a difference. So in terms of power, it looks like our longer barrel in our revolvers isn't helping us out too much. Even though on other occasions with other calibers, we've shown that in revolvers, as the barrel gets longer, the velocity gets greater. Now to put all that in perspective, using the same ammunition, I shoot it through the 16 and a half inch barrel of the 1022, and we've got a mean velocity of 1,262. That's 261 feet per second more than the Heritage revolver carbine. Now, the 1022 does have a 16 and a half inch barrel. And depending on what you're measuring, a half inch can be significantly more, not 261 feet per second more. That has to do with not having any pressure loss at the cylinder gap. Now to prove that off camera, I fired another type of ammunition, specifically CCI Stingers, 32 grain hollow point, through the Heritage carbine and the 1022. And with the 1022, we've got a velocity of 1558. 
stingers are a pretty hot round. But in our heritage carbine, we only went from 1,001 to 1,037, a gain of only 36 feet per second. That's again within the variation of one round to the next, not enough gain to really talk about. So it shows us again that the loss of pressure at that cylinder gap in our revolvers, at least in Heritage 22 revolvers, is in terms of power working against us, not for us. But with our longer barrel and our longer sighting plane, how will the longer barrel help us or hurt us in terms of accuracy? Let's put that to the test. So I've got the Heritage revolver with the 4 and 7 8 inch barrel, and we're back to the Federal 36 grain hollow point, and I'll shoot this target from a distance of 20 yards. I'm going to shoot offhand, which means standing unsupported, because remember, we're not necessarily trying to measure the precision of the firearm as much as we're trying to measure the accuracy that the average shooter can achieve with it. So let's see what I can do. I fired six shots, here's five, one flyer. Typically when I have a flyer like this, I'll say that's just me. In this case, I don't know that it was. All of these seemed like well-aimed shots. But our other five easily fit under one hand. Now, my aiming point was right here. So our non-adjustable sights are off by a little bit, but not much. But let's try something else. Now I've got our shot holes covered with the yellow pasties and I still have the 4 and 7 8 inch barrel revolver but now it's loaded with CCI blazer ammunition that's 22 long rifle with a 40 grain round nose lead projectile. Let's see to what degree if any this affects the size and location of our group. Now I have the group covered with the green pasties, and we can see it is a good group, but our point of impact has shifted. When you switch from one ammunition to another, you might shift your point of impact. Because these revolvers do not have adjustable sights, you have to find the ammunition that hits where your non-adjustable sights are aligned. You may have also noticed some delays in shooting that group. I had two duds out of the six rounds I was trying to fire. So that tells me that that's either quite a coincidence, or I have a bad batch of ammunition, or maybe this Heritage revolver does not like CCI Blazer ammunition. Let's see if we can test that. So I have the 1022 loaded with CCI Blazers out of the same brick I was using in the revolver. Let's see if it works. So far, so good. And for instructional purposes only. So there's nothing wrong with the ammo. Perhaps there's something wrong with the revolver or just the combination of that ammo and the revolver. Let's try the revolver again. So let's try six more rounds of the Blazer out of the revolver. Now, give me a minute while I reload. And now I'm reloaded, let's try six more rounds.
failure to fire. And so it would appear that this revolver does not particularly like the CCI ammunition. Up till now it's been working perfectly with the Federal ammunition. Something to keep in mind. So let's try another revolver. Now I have a new target set up and I have the Heritage revolver with the six and a half inch barrel and I'm back to the Federal ammunition. So I'll shoot this from 20 yards and see if the longer barrel helps shrink my group at all. And I've covered the group with the blue pasties. Again, I can put it all under one hand, but that's not a stellar group. Let's try this again. I have the second group covered with the yellow pasties, and except for the one flyer, which may or may not have been me, we see a much better group. However, not that close to where I was aiming. So again, with the Heritage revolvers in their non-adjustable sights, you may have to go through several types of ammo before you find something that hits fairly close to where you're aiming. Now we have a new target set up, and I've got the 16-inch barrel revolver loaded with the Federal ammunition. Let's see how I can do with this from 20 yards. I've got the shot holes covered with green pasties so they're easier to see, and this group easily fits under my fist with quite a bit of room to spare. So although our longer barrel cost us power, it does seem to improve my group quite a bit. However, we also see that although this is a good group, it's pretty far from my aiming point. So again, we're back to you might have to go through several different types of ammunition before you find something that hits where your non-adjustable sights are aligned. But when we look at this group, that I could achieve with the longer barrel, what about our carbine, which is essentially the same firearm except with a shoulder stock? Will I be able to get a better group than this because of the stock? Let's find out. I've got my shot holes covered with the yellow pasties, and you can see a pretty good group, and it's centered with one flyer. Typically when I have a flyer, I'll feel it and I'll know it's off, but that did not feel like me. And when I look at this impact, it's elongated. I think that bullet was tumbling. When we get back home and look at the dailies and can see it on a bigger screen, we'll know for sure. But the thought that one of those projectiles was tumbling is disquieting. So when it appears we have one round tumbling, that is a cause for concern. So I'll go back 20 yards and I'll shoot another group on this target with the carbine and let's see what happens.
Now I have the group covered with the blue pasties and no evidence that any of those were tumbling. So this one flyer, if it was tumbling, since none of the others were, that's an indicator that there was something wrong with that particular round of ammo as opposed to something being wrong with the rifle. But when we look at the groups that I got with the rifle, even though they were centered and with the long barreled revolver they were not, is the group I got with the rifle really any better? Maybe a little. There's a few things I want to discuss specific to shooting this Heritage Arms carbine. First of all, when you shoot a more conventional rifle, bolt action, lever action, or a more conventional handgun, like a semi-auto, most of the report you hear, most of the sound, is coming out of the muzzle. With revolvers, a lot of the sound is coming out of that cylinder gap. Now, it's not a big deal with a handgun that you're holding at arm's length. But with this firearm, that cylinder is pretty close to my face. And a lot of that sound is coming out right there. And even with my earplugs in, and this only being a 22 long rifle, it's pretty loud. Another thing I want to discuss is that you saw that when I'm using the chronograph or shooting the paper targets, I typically do not wear safety glasses. I don't really consider them absolutely mandatory unless I'm shooting something with a potential for blowback like steel knockdown plates or cinder blocks. This particular firearm is something with a potential for blowback. I was getting stuff blowing back in my face. I would really recommend wearing safety glasses when using a rifle like this. Now one other thing is that we demonstrated in a previous presentation that there's a lot of pressure coming out at that cylinder gap. And with some of your more powerful revolvers, if you get too close to that cylinder gap, you can really hurt yourself. And that is taken into consideration with this firearm. In the manual, it discusses holding it about like this, so you don't have your support arm out in front of that cylinder gap. Well, you saw when I was using the chronograph that I was holding it more like a conventional rifle. The shooting jacket is fairly thick material and it's long sleeved. But now I'm wearing something that's not only thinner material, I've got the sleeves rolled up. So how much damage am I going to do to myself if I hold this like a conventional rifle with exposed skin? Let's find out. And I can tell you that I am feeling stuff splattering against my face. But as far as my arm goes, no problem at all. But there are a few things to keep in mind in shooting this firearm. Now I want to demonstrate one more firearm. This is my Ruger Single 6 caliber 22 long rifle with a 9 inch barrel. It's a little different than the Heritage Rough Rider revolvers, but it's similar. One big difference is the big high visibility fully adjustable sights. So I'll go back 20 yards, shoot this target with this revolver. Let's see if I can do any better than I did with the Heritage revolvers. I have the shot holes covered with green pasty so they're easier to see in this one flyer. In this case, that really was just me. Now you'll notice my group is a little bit high. That's because I'm using the same Federal ammunition I used in the Heritage revolvers, but this isn't the ammunition I used to zero this revolver. But if I wanted to use that ammunition, I could adjust the sights on the Ruger. The Ruger is just a more refined firearm that has more features. As where the Heritage you have to put on half cock to freewheel the cylinder, the Ruger freewheels the cylinder just by opening loading gate and the cylinder freewheels a lot more smoothly. And as I mentioned it has high visibility fully adjustable sights. And with it I can shoot a little bit better groups. But there's a punchline. I frequently see those Heritage revolvers for sale at gun stores with price tags of less than $200. If I remember correctly, I paid $700 for this Ruger. 
Is it a better gun? In my opinion, yes, significantly so. Can I shoot it better than I could the Heritage revolvers? Yeah, a little bit. Can I shoot it $500 better? You be the judge. So the takeaways from all of this. The Heritage Rough Rider revolver is obviously not as refined and doesn't have as many features as something like the Ruger Single 6. But it does have the feature of a much lower price tag. And a lot of the crew own them, a lot of the crew shoot them, and they all like them. Now, people ask, would I want to use the Heritage revolver? And the answer is, if I were doing something like a fairly serious 22 handgun competition, or if I were doing handgun hunting for something fairly small like squirrels, I would consider the Heritage revolver to be insufficient. I'd definitely go with the single six. But for just about anything else, the Heritage would be sufficient. And the bottom line for me is, bang for your buck, it seems to be a really good handgun. Now, the question comes up, why would someone choose the Heritage Carbine? I don't like to talk about the specifics of price, but when I bought this one recently, it was at a store that had Ruger 1022s right next to it for a lower price than this was. There's also the fact that the Ruger 1022 is an auto loader as opposed to this being single action. The Ruger 1022 comes with a 10 shot detachable box mag. You can buy aftermarket 25 shot detachable box mags instead of a capacity of six and having to use a loading gate to reload. Not only that, with the same barrel length, the 1022 gives you significantly more power out of the same ammo. So why would you choose this? Well, there could be many reasons. I'll discuss a few of them. One of them would be that this makes a good match for your Heritage Revolver sidearm. Another one would be that if you're trying to train a new shooter, the single action configuration and the six shot capacity is going to keep them from being an ammo spaz. And when you're trying to train a new shooter and they're on the range and you tell them to do something, and they do the thing of, do what? <laughs> With a 1022, there's gonna be a really good chance that you got a round in the chamber and the safety off. With this, not as much of a chance that the hammer's going to be cocked. Could be a little safer for the shooter and the instructor. Another reason is that in kind of an old west sort of way, many people would consider this just pretty cool. And there's one more thing, and it wouldn't apply to a lot of people, but it does apply to some people. That is, that there are jurisdictions in which this carbine would be legal, and a 1022 would not. So, if you've watched the entirety of today's presentation, thank you for your attention. And as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional. And thanks for watching the Heritage Rough Rider 22 Long Rifle Rimfire Firearm video.